Coming up. Kazakhstan proposed to launch the Kazvak production in Saudi Arabia. The country is also willing to export the vaccine there. What else did the parties agree on during the joint business forum? Stay tuned. Footwear in Kazakhstan may rise in price by a third. What other changes will occur in the market with the introduction of mandatory labeling? Learn shortly. New concepts for new media. What is the future of television, newspapers and radio and where will digital journalism stand? Find out about the most controversial opinions in a report from Astana Media Week. Kazakhstan is resuming flights to Saudi Arabia. Direct flights from Almaty to Jeddah will be launched in October. The prospects for expanding bilateral cooperation were discussed during the Kazakh-Saudi Investment Business Forum in Nur Sultan. It was attended by more than 170 business representatives from the two countries. During the event, Kazakhstan advocated the bilateral recognition of vaccine passports with Saudi Arabia, as well as the possibility of supplying there the domestic Kazvak vaccine and launching a joint production of an antiviral drug made in Kazakhstan on their territory. Meanwhile, Saudi Saudi companies shared their experiences in implementing a national program aimed at developing the private sector, creating a vibrant society and increasing competitiveness in international trade. As part of the number of signed agreements, the parties intend to launch projects in IT, RES, tourism, energy and agriculture. Since the beginning of the year, trade between the two countries has grown by almost a third. Saudi Arabia, Karolin, Dilets, Ukulir, Naitu, Boyinsha, Kazakhstan, Investitia, Kuyuva, Campania, Nietmin, Kazushla, Delegates from Saudi Arabia are interested in investing in Kazakhstan. To date, direct investment from that country to our country amounts to about $117 million. However, this does not fully reflect the potential of investment cooperation between the two countries. We believe that this forum will become a motivation for future cooperation between large companies and the implementation of joint investment projects of the two countries. Ре компанияларымыздың арасындағы ынтымақтастыққа және бірлесіп инвестициялық жобаларға бастама болады деп ойлаймыз. Kazakhstan is ready to provide humanitarian aid to Afghanistan. In a meeting with Kazakh ambassador Alimkhan Yisingildiev, Afghanistan's acting foreign minister Amir Khan Mutaki thanked Kazakhstan for its willingness to provide substantive support. According to the Taliban representative, the new Afghan authorities are ready to establish peaceful relations with all countries, primarily with the states of the region. The leadership of the Islamic country has a high opinion of Kazakhstan's foreign policy on the world stage. The airport in Kabul will resume international flights, said a spokesperson for the foreign ministry of the interim Taliban government. The local authorities hope that all international airlines and countries that previously flew to Kabul will resume flights. After the shooting at the capital's airport when the country was captured by the Taliban, the building was significantly damaged. The Social Democratic Party won in Germany's national election. The preliminary results showed that it gained almost 26% of the votes. Chancellor Angela Merkel's union bloc took the second place with 24%. 14.5% of Germans voted for the Green Party. A little more than 10% gained the Liberal Free Democratic Party and the Alternative for Germany Party. However, everything may change. The results are not yet final. The counting of votes continues in the regions. Meanwhile, the voter turnout was 76%. These elections are especially important, since this is a new beginning for the country after 16 years under the leadership of Angela Merkel. Germany sets a new course. The interest of the voters is very high. After the elections, there will be even greater tension because nobody fully knows who will become the chancellor. However, Armin Laschet from the Conservative Union bloc still has options to become the chancellor. 
The United Kingdom sees a fuel shortage that caused long queues at local gas stations. Some stations are closed at all. Meanwhile, drivers are fighting over places at gas stations. The police urge citizens to remain prudent and not pump out all the fuel at the stations. The Minister of Transport correlates the situation to the pandemic. According to him, the shortage of drivers is caused by the fact that the standard proficiency testing procedure was disrupted due to COVID-19. The government promised to resolve the problem in the coming days by issuing temporary visas to 5,000 foreign truck drivers. Kazakhstan reports 1,878 new cases of COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. Almaty accounts for the highest single-day case count in the country. The southern metropolis detected 485 new positive cases of infection in the past day. Nusultan followed with 186 new cases. Karaganda region is in the third place with 184 new infections. Since the beginning of the pandemic, total COVID-19 cases in Kazakhstan have passed 878,000. Meanwhile, according to data provided by the country's health ministry, more than 63,000 residents continue to receive treatment for coronavirus. 895 patients are in serious condition. 142 people are on a ventilator. Kazakhstan continues its COVID-19 vaccination campaign. To date, over 6,408,099 citizens have been fully vaccinated against the virus with two doses. The production and import of unlabeled footwear on the territory of Kazakhstan will be prohibited from November 1st, the State Revenue Committee reported. Importers are given the opportunity to sell remaining goods until April 1st, 2022. This measure will help combat the illegal turnover of products. After all, nearly half of the entire footwear market in the country is in the shadows. After the introduction of mandatory labeling, each pair will have its own digital code. It will provide all the necessary information about the quality of goods. According to Director General of the Digital Economy, Economy Development Center, Bikesh Kurmangaliva, 96% accounts for imports and only 4% for domestic production. The price of the digital code tariff for one pair of shoes is 2.68 tenge. As a single operator, we conducted negotiations with 45 foreign factories for the production of footwear for Kazakhstan. That is, on average, the cost of labeling for producers and importers is between 0.1 and 2.5% of the price of one pair. In short, digital labeling does not significantly change the price of a product of legal operating interpreters in the market. The price of footwear in Kazakhstan can go up after the introduction of labeling, because their cost was 20% lower due to the fact that value-added tax and customs duties were not paid for the illegal transportation of goods. The project manager of the Digital Economy Development Center, Mohamed Khaydar Said, noted that the shortcomings have been eliminated, and everything is working within the law. Also, free mobile applications were developed for the convenience of consumers and entrepreneurs. Kazakhstan is set to introduce new concepts for mass media and define the new media, announced Kazakh Vice Minister of Information and Social Development Kimilbek Oyshabayev at the Astana Media Week. He spoke about the possible changes in the law on mass media. With the growth of new technologies, we are currently working out legislative measures for the development of the media. In particular, we are currently developing amendments to the law that, of course, we will first discuss with our journalistic community. These changes may be adopted in 2023. We are giving definitions to concepts of the new media, such as an internet platform aimed at information dissemination, and this includes search engines, OTT platforms and social networks. And accordingly, we establish certain rules of work for them in Kazakhstan. Also, the media measurement procedure will be legislatively introduced. Astana Media Week 2021 traditionally brought together hundreds of participants, including top managers of the world's leading media, public figures, famous journalists, documentary filmmakers, bloggers from the United States, the United Kingdom, Russia, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. The event will run for two days in offline and online formats.
A tourist route is planned to be opened in the Akhjaiyukh Nature Reserve. It will consist of two directions. The first is intended for children who will be able to enjoy the beauty of nature, and the second is for adults. They will have an opportunity not only to swim, but also to sunbathe. Our goal is to preserve and increase population of rare birds, animals and plants through tourist development. For example, a glossy ibis is very rare. Scientists regularly monitor the state of our nature. The autumn migration began for birds in the oral Caspian Basin of the Akhjaiyuk Nature Reserve. It will last until November. More than 290 species of birds can be found there. For some of them, the Caspian Sea region is a transit region on the way to the southern skies. Some of the birds stay there for the winter. During the global migration, about 10 million shorebirds, about 5 million ducks, about 2 million coots and about 35,000 flamingos fly over our territory. It is a shelter for most bird species, as it provides a good food supply. Our territory is a shelter for most species. The harsh oil region attracts with its rich flora and fauna. Wild boars, two types of wolves and raccoon dogs live on the Caspian coast. There are also over 200 plant species growing there. Three of them are listed in the red data book, including Shrank's tulip. Our goal is to preserve local flora and monitor endangered plant species. It starts during fruiting. An exhibition dedicated to the closure of the Semipalatinsk nuclear test site has opened at the headquarters of the United Nations in New York. The permanent exposition displays photographs that clearly demonstrate the dangerous consequences of such tests. One of the exhibits is a copy of the decree on the closure of the test site signed on August 29, 1991 by the first president of Kazakhstan, Nursultan Nazarbayev. The event participants noted that Kazakhstan's renunciation of nuclear weapons is an example for other countries. We need these kind of memorials, these kinds of exhibitions uh, to show people that this existed and this has to stop and we can never have nuclear testing again. And Kazakhstan uh, can serve as um, an example of a country that is standing up for demonstrating this, this happened in my country. It was terrible. How, you know, your country decided to close the Semipalatinsk testing site is a very important landmark event and we often talk about this. Um, so, um, so I really uh, enjoyed uh, meeting with um, His Excellency very much and I hope that together we will be able to move towards the elimination of nuclear weapons as quickly as we can. The scientific expedition Trails of Nomads travels to Russia. Kazakhstan has a great number of historical ties with this country. According to sources, when Emperor of France, Napoleon Bonaparte, went to war with Moscow, the Russian army had repelled the enemy. Almost 260,000 militaries, including Kazakh warriors, participated in this bloody battle, which is evidenced by the historical data preserved in the Borodino Museum. One of our priceless exhibits is the Mamluk checkers. Mamluks, as you know, were the personal guard of the Emperor Napoleon, which he brought after the French campaign in Egypt in 1798. This unique exhibit came to our museum a long time ago, even before the Second World War. It belongs to old acquisitions of our museum. The expedition confirms that the heroic deeds of Kazakh ancestors have not been forgotten. For example, during the Second World War, in the battle at the Volokolamsk Highway, hero of the Soviet Union Bauzhan Momoshula performed his feat. The alley of heroes in Volokolamsk still has a monument in honor of the famous Kazakh officer. <laughs> The Volokolamsk Highway is the gateway to Moscow. It had a direct way to the capital. If the troops failed to take the fight to the enemy, the German tanks would have moved to Moscow. In this battle, Bauzhan Momoshula proved himself to be an excellent strategist and far-sighted commander. He has led several dozen successful military operations. He developed a tactic of combat with small forces against an enemy many times superior in strength. <laughs> 
Әсіресе Бауыржан Момышылының жағындай тактикалары өте ұнаған. The Kazakh ancestors, who made their invaluable contribution to repelling the enemy and defending Moscow, remain forever in the memory of the people.